Hey guys, it's Allie. So the video that I'll be doing for you today is another reading video as per your requests from my classic fairy tale treasury book. If you're not familiar with this book, I first introduced it in a Thrifty Tingles video and I bought it to read bedtime stories to my son and in that video um, I read a little bit of a story for you guys And, and after that, I received lots of requests to do a full video of just reading from this book, which I did. And I've since received even more requests to do another one. So that's what I'm going to be doing for you guys today. As long as you keep requesting it, I'll keep doing it. Because I like reading these stories. And maybe we can just keep going until we've read all the stories in the to switch my shots and read a couple stories out of here. Ear to ear for your Three little pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived in a broken down cottage with their mother. They were very poor. The three little pigs decided that it was none too early for them to go into the world and seek their fortunes. So the first little pig packed his favorite belongings, said goodbye to his mother, and set off. This is cute. Their house looks like He hadn't gone far before he came to a fine road paved with stones. What a beautiful road, said the first little pig. I believe I will walk down it and see what I can find. After a while, the first little pig came upon a man carrying a bundle of straw.
Good morning, sir, said the first little pig. Please sell me that bundle of straw so that I can make myself a house. Certainly, said the man. So the first little pig gave the man all his money. And the man gave him the bundle of straw. The first little pig got right to work. He lashed the straw to a coil. Then he wound the coil round and round to build up the walls. Soon the first little pig had made himself a cozy little house of straw, and he was very pleased. This little pig money. <laughs> but just as the first little pig was sitting down to his first supper in his new home, along came a big, the wolf had been hunting in the woods all day without finding anything to eat, and he was very hungry. When he saw the little pig's house, he thought, Now I have found my supper. The wolf knocked on the little pig's door and cried, Little pig, little pig, let me in. The first little pig appeared out the window. When he saw the big bad wolf, he said, No, indeed, I won't let you in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. That made the wolf cross. So he growled in a very loud voice, Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your eyes. The first little pig still wouldn't let him in. So the big bad wolf huffed and he puffed until the little house of straw came tumbling down. The first little pig had to run away as fast as he could or the wolf would surely have eaten him up. Shortly afterward, the second little pig decided it was time for him to seek his fortune. So he said goodbye to his mother, and off he went. He soon came to a road that was freshly paved with gravel. What a nice new road, thought the second little pig. I believe I will walk down it and see what I can find. So he turned onto the new gravel. second little pig came upon a man carrying a big bundle of sticks. Good morning, sir, said the second little pig. Please sell me that bundle of sticks so I can build myself a house. Certainly, said the man. So the second little pig gave the man all his money. Then he took the bundle of sticks and got to second little pig sawed the sticks neatly. Then he nailed them together. Before long, he had made himself a cozy little house of sticks. But no sooner had the second little pig finished putting on the front door, than along came the big bad wolf. The wolf knocked loudly at the door and cried, Little pig, little pig, let me in. When the second little pig peeked of the window and saw the big bad wolf, he replied, No, indeed, I won't let you in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. That made the wolf cross. So the wolf growled in a very loud voice, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. The little pig was frightened, but he still wouldn't let the wolf in. So the big bad wolf began to huff and puff. He huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. Before long, the big bad wolf blew down the second little pig's house of sticks, right down to the ground. The second little pig had to run away as fast as he could, or the 
the big bad wolf would have surely eaten him up. After a while, the third little pig decided it was time for him to go into the world and seek his fortune. So he packed his belongings and said goodbye to his mother. Then off he went. After a while, he came to a small dirt road. What a quiet little road, the third little pig said to himself. I believe I shall go down it and see what I can find. So the third little pig walked down the dirt road. Soon he came upon a man carrying a big load of bricks. Good morning, sir, said the third little pig. Please sell me your load of bricks so I can build myself a house. Certainly, said the man. So the third little pig gave the man all his money, and the man gave him the bricks. The third little pig mixed up some cement, and he carefully laid the bricks one on top of the other. Before long, the little pig had built himself a cozy, sturdy little house of bricks. No sooner had the third little pig gone inside than along came the big, bad wolf. The wolf knocked on the door as loudly as he could and cried, Little pig, little pig, let me in. But the third little pig had seen the big, bad wolf coming, so he replied, No, indeed, I won't let you in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf was very cross when he heard that, so he growled in a big voice, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Then the wolf huffed and puffed, and he puffed and he huffed. And he huffed and he puffed some more. But no matter how hard he tried, he could not blow down the little house of bricks. So the wolf climbed onto the roof and stuck his head down the chimney. I am just poking my nose inside, he said. As you like, said the third little pig. Now I am just putting my ears inside, said the wolf. Fine with me, said the third little pig. Now I'm just putting my paws inside, said the wolf. Very well, said the third little pig. Now I am just putting my tail inside, said the wolf. And he fell down the third little pig's chimney. Suddenly, the wolf gave a terrible howl, for the clever little pig had set a big kettle of water to boil. big bad wolf had to scramble up the chimney as fast as he could, or otherwise he surely would have been boiled alive in the third little pig's big kettle. And so the big bad wolf ran away, and the third little pig lived happily ever after in his cozy, sturdy little house.
Thumbelina. There once lived a couple who longed to have a child, but their wish did not come true. At last, the woman went to a fairy and asked for her help. The fairy gave her a seed and said, Plant this in a flower pot and water it carefully. Soon a beautiful flower sprang up. It looked like a tulip with its petals tightly closed. How lovely, said the woman, kissing the flower. As she did so, the petals opened. Inside sat a tiny, graceful girl, no bigger than the woman's thumb. The woman was overjoyed. She and her husband named the child Thumbelina. Thumbelina's cradle was a walnut shell. She had a pillow of violets and a quilt of rose petals. At night, her cradle sat on the windowsill. During the day, the woman kept a bowl filled with water. Thumbelina amused herself by rowing around the bowl in a boat made of a large tulip petal. She used two white horsehairs for oars. As she rowed, she sang in the tiniest, prettiest voice imaginable. One night, the big ugly toad hopped through the window. When the toad saw Thumbelina asleep in her cradle, she cried, She would make the perfect wife for my son. The ugly toad snatched the cradle with Thumbelina inside and carried it to her home in the swamp. The toad set Thumbelina on a large lily pad in the middle of the water so she could not escape. Then she went to fetch her son, who was even bigger and uglier than she was. While the toad was gone, Thumbelina woke up. When she saw where she was, she began to cry and wonder how she would ever get home again. Some fish swimming below heard Thumbelina's cries. When the fish saw how pretty Thumbelina was, they felt sorry for her. We must set her free, they said, so she does not have to marry the toad's son. The little fish began to bite at the stem. the lily pad. Before long, they had gnawed through it, and the lily pad floated away. Just then, the toad returned with her son. Stop, the son called after Thumbelina. Where are you going? You are to be my wife and live with me here in the swamp. But it was too late. Thumbelina was already floating downstream. Thumbelina went a long way, past wide green fields and deep shady woods. Birds and butterflies stopped to say hello to her, and she felt very happy. Suddenly, a big brown beetle swooped down and seized Thumbelina in his claws. How pretty you are, he said. I shall make you my wife. How frightened Thumbelina was. beetle sat her on the branch of a tall tree to show her to the other beetles, but they did not think Thumbelina was pretty at all. How ugly she is, they sneered, turning up their feelers. Her waist is so slim, and she has only two legs. She looks horrible. After that, the beetle decided he didn't want Thumbelina for a wife after all, so he flew her down from the tree and set her Thumbelina was very sad, since she felt the beetles were right. She did not know that she was really very lovely. All summer, Thumbelina lived in the forest. She wove herself a bed of grass and hung it under a large leaf to shelter herself from the rain. 
She drank the morning dew and ate nectar from the flowers. She was perfectly content until autumn came, and then winter. First, the leaf Thumbelina lived under died and shriveled. Now she had no shelter from the wind and rain. There was no longer any food to eat either. Then it began to snow, and Thumbelina almost froze to death. So she went looking for food and shelter. She walked until she came to a large cornfield. The corn stalks had been cut long before. Nothing was left but the stubble, which to Thumbelina seemed as tall as a great forest. At last, she found the home of a field mouse. She knocked timidly on the door. When the field mouse answered, Thumbelina said shyly, Please, can you spare a grain of barley? The field mouse, who was a kind thing, replied, Of course. Come in, you dear little creature. She led Thumbelina inside and fed her. The field mouse's home was very comfortable, and her cupboards were full of the food she had stored for winter. So she told Thumbelina, If you will keep my house tidy for me, and tell me some good stories, you may stay with me all winter, if you like. Yes, please, cried Thumbelina. And so she did all that the field mouse asked, and in return she was kept warm and well fed. One day the field mouse said, Listen, Thumbelina, my neighbor is coming to pay us a visit tomorrow. He is much richer than I, and he wears a beautiful black velvet Oh, he's a very clever man, but he is blind, so be sure to tell him your very best stories. Of course, said Thumbelina, but she was not very excited about the visitor, for he was a mole. The mole came the next day, wearing his black velvet coat. Even though he was very rich, and probably very learned as well, Thumbelina did not like said dreadful things about the sun and the flowers and birds, yet he had never seen them. Nevertheless, Thumbelina told him her best stories, and sang him all the songs she knew. She had such a lovely voice that the mole fell in love with her. However, he did not say anything, because he was very cautious. Instead, he invited Thumbelina and the field mouse to pay him a visit. So the three set out through a tunnel the mole had recently dug, between his home and that of the field mouse. Now please watch your step, the mole told them. It's quite dark here, and there is a dead bird farther down the tunnel, but don't let that alarm you. When they came to the dead bird, the mole accidentally pushed his nose through the roof of the tunnel. The sun came shining through, and Thumbelina clearly saw the bird. He was a swallow, and he did not look as if he had been dead for long. Poor bird, Thumbelina thought sadly. He must have died of the cold. The mole pushed the bird aside roughly. Useless creatures, birds, he said gruffly. Thumbelina said nothing. But when the mole and the field mouse had gone ahead, she bent over and kissed the bird. Perhaps you were one of the birds that sang to me all summer, she said. How nice it was to hear your sweet music. After the mole showed them his house and gave them tea, he led them home again. Then he repaired the hole so no sunlight or cold could enter. But that night, Thumbelina could not sleep. thinking of the poor swallow in the tunnel. At last, she crept from her bed and wove a blanket out of hay. She took it into the tunnel and laid it gently over the swallow. Thumbelina sadly laid her head on the bird's breast. When she did, she heard a sound. It was the beating of the swallow's heart. He was not dead, only numb with cold. Thumbelina was afraid. 
the swallow was much bigger than she, but she bravely wrapped the blanket more tightly around him. Then she tiptoed away. The next day, she slipped away to visit the swallow again. He was awake now, but very weak. So Thumbelina brought him water and honey, and all through the long, cold winter, she carefully nursed the swallow back to health. She told the field mouse and the mole nothing of this, for they did not think much of birds. At last, spring came. The swallow was now well enough to fly away. Thumbelina reopened the hole in the roof of the tunnel for him. Why don't you come with me? The swallow asked Thumbelina. I can take you to warm, beautiful places. Thumbelina dearly wished she could go with the swallow. The field mouse has been very kind to me, she said. I cannot just leave her. Very well, said the swallow. Farewell, kind maiden. I hope I see you again. And with that, the swallow flew away. Tears filled Thumbelina's eyes. She was very fond of the swallow and would miss him so much. Spring passed, then summer. Thumbelina worked for the field mouse who treated her kindly but hardly ever let her go outside into the beautiful sunshine. One day, as autumn was coming, the field mouse said to her, I have good news, dear Thumbelina. The mole has asked for your hand in marriage. We must work to get your wedding clothes ready. But I don't want to marry the mole, cried Thumbelina, bursting into tears, at the thought of living with him in his dark underground tunnel far from the bright sun and all the lovely flowers. Don't be silly, the field mouse said crossly. The mole is handsome and rich. He'll make you an excellent husband. Marry him, or I will bite you. <laughs> the field mouse told Thumbelina the wedding would take place in a month. Four spiders spun the wedding veil while Thumbelina sewed her tiny wedding gown. As the wedding day drew near, Thumbelina began sadder and sadder. How dreadful it would be to always live in the darkness. Would she ever see the blue sky or the bright sun again? Would she ever hear a bird sing? The day before the wedding, Thumbelina begged the field mouse to let her go outside one last time. At last, the field mouse gave her permission. Thumbelina slipped out the door and stared longingly at the sky. Farewell, beautiful sun, she cried, stretching out her arms. Farewell, sweet flowers. Please, please say hello to my dear swallow for me, if you ever see him again. Just then, Thumbelina heard a tweet tweet above her head, and there was the swallow himself. He was flying south for winter, and he had come to say goodbye to Thumbelina before he Thumbelina began to cry. She told him how she was to marry the mole the next day. Oh no, cried the swallow. Come with me instead. I will fly you to beautiful lands where the sun always shines and flowers always bloom. Oh yes, Thumbelina said, I will go with you. For she could not bear to marry the mole. Quickly she climbed on the swallow's back. And the bird spread his wings, and he and Thumbelina flew away. They flew over tall pine forests and snow-covered mountain peaks, to warm countries where the grass is always green, and orange and lemon trees grow. After several days, they came to a clear blue lake. An ancient palace of white marble stood beside it. In the garden lay a marble pillar broken. Large, beautiful flowers were growing among the pieces of pillar. The swallow placed Thumbelina beside the most beautiful flower. I think you'll be happy here, he told her. Just then, the petals opened. Inside was a tiny man with shining gossamer wings. He was the fairy of that flower and king of all the flower fairies. Thumbelina's size, and he fell in love with her at once. Will 
you be my wife? he asked. Thumbelina smiled, for he was nothing like the horrible mole. Yes, she said happily. At that, all the flowers opened, and each flower fairy gave Thumbelina a gift. The best gift of all was a pair of tiny gossamer wings. Now Thumbelina would be able to fly and flit from flower to flower. At Thumbelina's wedding to the fairy king, the swallow sang a special wedding song. Then it was time for him to fly back north. As he went, he sang of Thumbelina, and that is how we came to hear her story. this little fairy tale video. Found it relaxing. Many of you request this, so I thought I would just go ahead and do another one. Maybe I'll just keep doing these periodically until we've read all the stories in the book. So, as always. Get a little bit down your nose as well. And kind of do this with your lips. <laughs> 